This uh, looks like he's a bit under pressure at the moment. And Klug has gone. I can tell you, by the way, that uh, now as we're getting through, if there's just three laps to go, that Klug went out on the, uh, on the fourth lap as Andy van der Poel begins to put the pressure on at the front. So Mike Klug, the uh, champion of the world in 1992 at Leeds, now out of the race. And other riders have been dropping by the wayside too under the sheer pace of this group at the front. Just three laps to go then. In this group then, we've got... Uh, Van Sandvliet of Belgium, here trying to get up on equal terms and get to them. The Belgian rider, but he's been shot out a bit now, there we are. Six laps covered, 28.66 uh, kilometres per hour at the time. The leading group then, as I've been forming, Denise, Bramati, Pantoni, Magnin, Ciotti, uh, Van der Poel, Grunendal, Weibel and Runkel. Together with Vivekan of uh, Belgium, let's see who's left at the moment. Two, four, six, eight, still about ten of them. Well, the French looking good here. Manuel Manion, the French champion, going straight through. And the, the French holding their breath. There have been so many attacks throughout this race. Nobody's really got more than a few seconds. They've been pulled back again. It's not often you see a cyclo cross like this with so many men in together. And all good men in this little group. There, Denise in the red with the white bands around his jersey. The, the Danish rider in that little group at the moment. Been three times the mountain bike champion of the world, Denise in that the group, and also the cyclocross champion in 1993. He's been poised always around about third to fifth, and he's still in with a shout. As on the front, on the left-hand side, Van der Poel grits his gritty teeth because there's dirt flying up in their faces right now. Grunendal on the red crash out just behind him. Number six, Bate Velbel from uh, Switzerland, just in there as well. Vabel, another of these mountain bike riders as well who takes part in cyclocross and road racing. They're in their elements when it's muddy and Van der Poel's going to the front and he's taking one rider with him. Looks like Bramati's gone on his wheel. Van der Poel's put the pressure on. Is this just a little bit of a sounding out to see if he can put the pressure on or are they going to get away? Van der Poel eases round that slippy bend. Gets worse as the race goes on. The below freezing temperatures last night left a frosty top to it. But they've been cutting through it now. Van der Poel on the front. Then number 52, Bramati. Bit of trouble for one of the French riders further towards the back. Number 35 you see on your screen there, Emmanuel Magnin. Grandal coming through here in the orange jersey. Then Pontoni with the little yellow crash hat on. Chiotti, the other French rider, drifted off the pace a little bit. And here further back, our earlier Vandelli, who also tried to stay with it. And burying himself, Van uh, Sandvliet of Belgium. Dominic Arno, previous world champion, just gone through for France. What a cracking lot of good riders we've got here. Still though, at the front, Van der Poel putting on the pressure. Manning trying to close that gap, just jumping through ahead of the Italian in the blue. And they're back again, they've got them. Well, Van der Poel tried to get away, but managed to close that gap. The Frenchman in the front in the pale coloured jersey with red and blue blends on. The dark blue behind him, Bramati for Italy. The orange colour is that of uh, Adri van der Poel. Well, I know that the Brits out there will be roaring on for Adri van der Poel. He's very much like rider all over the, uh, uh, the world. And he's won many things in the past. The age, best on the age, he's won that one. He's won the Tour of Flanders, but he's never yet won the World uh, Cyclocross Championship. They call him the Eternal Second, like he's married as well to uh, the daughter of another Eternal Second, Raymond Pulidor. And he's now in this little group now, but look at these number of riders, still in there with a shout for a medal. Vivekan's closed back up, number 21, number 36 behind there, Jerome Chiotti. Chiotti, who took the French Championship last year when he was riding for Le Groupement, and no sooner he got the Championship jersey around him than the Groupement virtually folded. But uh, now he's riding with the Festina team on his bright yellow and blue Peugeot bike, you pick him out there, they've got three of them in this little group, they were very dominant in the French championships where the Festina team, and now they can perm any one from, uh, from three, although I think as far as uh, Haglund's concerned, I don't think he's going to quite close that gap down, we'll have to wait and see, as Mannion does shoulder his bike, jumps back on again, 52 just there, that's uh, Bramati, look at Bramati, sitting in there, comfortable at the moment, And Van der Poel watching him like a hawk. Yeah. 
Looking back in slow motion at these riders coming through here. You can see the concentration on the face. As they get tired, as the race goes on, then it's easy to make a mistake, to slip, and if you just fall here, then you're going to go right back from first to about ninth, and you've got to work your way back up again. This really is a close match championship being held at Montreux, where they had the first uh, championship of the world uh, when Robic, who is a Montreux rider, won the first world championship uh, here. And that was way back in 1950 when Jan Robic, who was also a great roadman, he used to climb like a little angel with a little, little short chap. Here, change of bikes. Ramati in the blue. Manning sold his, but it looks like he's not bothered to change this time round. He's got those spinachy wheels. If you see them slowing down, they've got like four uh, double spokes on them. And many of the riders are choosing to use these wheels. Now, they're quite light and they cut through the air. And of course, they cut through the mud as well. Comes concern if you dropped off for the bike and put your hand, he might cut your fingers off, but so far that's not happened. Again on the tricky descent. This massive crowd in the centre of the park. You can stand at the top and look down. It's a bowl full of people with the, the circuit going up and down and twisting back and forth, just like a big bowl of muddy spaghetti with the people on either side making all the noise you're hearing now. This hard climb, those final hundreds and so metres up, it's a bit like a wall, like the wall of uh, Muir uh, and Muir de Grammont, which we've seen on the classics, it's fr pretty smooth though, they've, they've romped up that, haven't they? When I looked at it, I thought, they're not going to ride this for about 10 laps, but they've done it, and still our group at the front, about 10 men packed together. Coming up then with two laps to go. It's still anybody's race. This is almost unbelievable to have so many top talented riders this close together, but that has a lot to do with the surface. Those people have been watching cyclocross over the years. When you get very muddy conditions and they're sort of ankle deep in it, then it saps the strength and the riders are inclined to open up bigger gaps. But it's so fast here, they're getting shelter, they're getting on the wheels, and they're being able to run without falling down and sliding back down steep slopes. It has produced a very interesting uh, world championships, and really anybody who's anybody is in this group here. Let's have a look back through the Swiss because the world champion is looks like he's not made it either. There's number six going through Bake Vale. Yes, he is. He's just hanging on at the back. The reigning world champion is in there. So we've got two from Switzerland in this little group. Uh, but they're a bit toward the back of the pack. The odd man out is um, the Danish rider in the red and white. Denise just riding on his own. He hasn't got a teammate with him. The two from Holland two from Italy, two from France, and the odd Belgian in there at the well at the moment. So the two odd ones out, number 21, the Belgian colours, blue with stripes of yellow and red. And that's number 21 in there, Vervecken. And he's lying back about eighth in the front at the moment. Van der Poel in the front. Then Ramati. Manning, cutting across the far side. We've got Ciotti together right with him. Pontoni with a little yellow hat, looking comfortable at the moment. Antoni, eight times the Italian champion and the amateur champion of the world in 1992. Still poised, back there, what, fourth from the front at the moment, so anything might happen as far as he's concerned to come out through this little one. Antoni, 29 years of age now, but the two men on the front, very experienced rider, Adrie van der Poel, 36 years of age, Adrie van der Poel, and just imagine having finished five times second in this race and begin up with the leading pack. No sooner talk about Daniel Pontoni, the 29-year-old here, the amateur champion in 92, third in 91 and 1993. He comes straight through from fourth to first, just shows you how it quickly changes. This is some race, this is. I wouldn't like to nip down the bookies and put anyone and anybody here, unless you can back all eight straight up to win, but I don't think you get that chance. Again, the Italians put the pressure on, again it's Bramati on the front. Up further back, a few problems here. So the other Dutchman's having a few problems. So it looks as if uh, Van Sevliet has also now blown a gasket. Wim Gloss is also in some trouble. Let's watch the style of Pontoni just squaring his bike up. He'll be quite an acrobat at this business. Two.